<laughs> I think it's very sensible. We're talking about Francois Hollande in the business. He's going to be meeting some French entrepreneurs, in fact, in Silicon Valley later. There are some uh, business people who've made it big here in France, though, too. Yeah, I mean, many of those who've left complained that it was too difficult for them to succeed in France, and that's why they went to places like uh, Silicon Valley. They've complained about things like high taxes and too much red tape for businesses in this country. But there are some entrepreneurs, of course, who've made it here in France, among them the billionaire Xavier Niel, who founded the telecoms company Free. He says companies can grow in France, but the government could do more to help them. Delano D'Souza has the story. Free, a name that's shaken up the French telecoms market, a company that provides at-home internet services. In 2012, they launched mobile phone operations and have since attracted 10% of French customers. Xavier Niel, the company's founder, has become a billionaire in the French digital industry. He believes entrepreneurial success in France is possible. Silicon Valley is lucky because it attracts talented people, so it is successful. For companies to set up in France, we need to have pro-competitive and pro-innovation policies. But if we have a state that is pro-competition and doesn't limit people, we will have success. Free Signature Innovation, the Freebox, a single unit that integrates television, telephone and broadband services. It's helped the company to attract graduates from France's top engineering schools. The flat hierarchy allows my ideas to get across quicker. Despite criticism of high taxes in France, Niel says French entrepreneurs have certain advantages over their U.S. counterparts. In Silicon Valley, if you created a company 10 years ago, you pay 28 percent in taxes. In France, we pay less than 25 percent. Xavier Niel is also known as an angel investor. So far, he's helped provide initial funding to over 800 tech startups globally. Now we're going to go over to the US next. In fact, uh, another standoff over the debt ceiling looks set anyway uh, to have been avoided. Yes, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives has passed an increase to America's debt ceiling. Unusual uh, because they did it without attaching any particular uh, strings to it in the House of Representatives. This uh, debt ceiling, of course, had been a political football in many recent budget battles. The bill now passes to the Senate for approval. Uh, this after the Treasury Secretary Jack Lee warned that America risked running out of cash by the end of this month if the debt ceiling was raised. Raised now until March 2015. And staying in the US, um, the woman who can move markets. This is Janet Yellen, the new head of the Federal Reserve. She was speaking to a congressional committee on Tuesday, signalled a continuation of the Fed's current policies. Uh, will wind down that monetary stimulus it's been injecting into the economy uh, as things improve. That stimulus had been responsible for sending markets in the US and in Asia to record highs. But recent fears over when the money tap would be turned off have uh, caused jitters among investors in emerging markets. That was something that Janet Yellen shrugged off in her testimony. Let's take a listen. My colleagues on the FOMC and I anticipate that economic activity and employment will expand at a moderate pace this year and next. The unemployment rate will continue to decline toward its longer-run sustainable level, and inflation will move back toward 2 percent over coming years. Now, the markets were particularly pleased with that news from Janet Le Yellen. In fact, Wall Street climbed steadily as she was speaking. That sort of optimism has spilled over into Asia on the markets today as well, as you can see a broadly positive picture across the Asian markets. In China, new figures that exports grew at a faster than expected rate of 10.6% in January uh, has helped Chinese shares imports up 10% too. But there are some questions over how reliable those figures are coming from uh, several economists. Uh, nonetheless, the Shanghai Composite and the Hang Seng uh, managing to nudge into the green. OK, Stephen, take us uh, through some of the day's companies' news now, then. We'll start with Toyota, which is recalling almost 2 million Prius cars around the world. The Japanese carmaker says it's because of a software fault that could cause the vehicle to slow down suddenly. The company says it's aware of 400 cases of the problem, mostly in Japan, but that it had caused no accidents so far. Net profits at the oil company Total fell by 20% to 8.4 billion euros last year. The company, the third most valuable in the oil sector globally, says the fall is down to reduced production and the price of oil. In the last three months of 2012 sales, the French firm fell by 4%, just under 48 billion euros. 
when the French bank Société Générale earned 2.14 billion in net profit last year, according to results released this morning. That's less than had been expected. It comes after the bank had to pay 450 million in fines over the investigation into the manipulation of the interbank lending rate LIBOR. Now, I've got a question for you. Have you ever become addicted to something? If you have, this is one for you, because uh, mobile gamers all over the world are very disappointed last weekend when a firm favourite was removed from sale, but now we have an idea why. Yeah, this is Flappy Bird. It was mm. the top-selling game on the iTunes Apple Store. Uh, a mobile game that sees you guide a little bird around a series of there obstacles. You can see some footage of it there. Poor old Flappy Bird. Um, <laughs> some some users became so addictive. It's quite a simple game, but some users yeah. became so addictive they claimed it was ruining their lives. Um, the creator <laughs> announced on Saturday that he was going to pull it from sale. It's a 29-year-old Vietnamese man called Dong Nguyen. Yeah. Um, he, the move, of course, sent many people flurrying to buy it. Uh, the phones holding the game, which is no longer available, Available for sale are selling mm. on eBay, some <laughs> listed for up to a hundred thousand dollars. Don't think right. that will sell anytime soon. Uh, but in an interview with the Wall Street <laughs> Journal, Dong Yang has said the reason he did it is because the game became too addictive. He thought it was just going to be something people would play for a few minutes. Yeah. It wouldn't go so quite so uh, popular as it did, uh, and so he decided to take it down because it was just all a bit too much. Very socially aware of him, he probably could have made a fortune out of it. He was making a fortune. Making 50, a fortune 50, 50 million a day it was taking in an ad revenue. Flappy bird. There you go. Now you know where it's gone. The Stephen. simple ideas work best. Exactly. That's what Stephen says.